Have you ever wondered how insanely powerful AI image generation tools are? Well, I've taken two tools and I've created the most insanely detailed and complex scenes, adding in weird and chaotic elements. Subscribe for more unlocking of these AI tools. All right, so you want to know how to create insanely complex and uh, expansive scenes. So um, what I've got open over here is Mid Journey. So log in and subscribe if you haven't already to Mid Journey. Really great value for money. Um, if you want to have a, a bit more of a uh, insight into some of the prompting, have a look at one of my other videos. Right, let's get into it. So we want to create some expansive or to awesome scenes. Um, open up your Discord site and this is going to be a follow along video so you can see what I've done and that it actually works. Alright, so what we're going to look at first is a how powerful Mid Journey is and how it is able to take so many elements and so many details and combine them into one expansive scene. Alright, so um, what I've created over here is a prompt, so forward slash imagine, and then I said hundreds of tiny characters in an expansive scene. So this was a key word over here, expansive meaning that it would open it up. It shows the power of the complexity, and I wanted it to make the most astounding image ever created. Um, right, I don't think these things are strictly necessary, but what I did was also add it in the type of camera. Again, has a profound effect on the clarity and the depth and detail of the actual images. All right, and I said I wanted to make it ultra realistic in 32K. So, as you can see over here, what it's done is it's created a extremely complex scene. All right, so we've got some funky characters over here, and there's hundreds of them. And if we zoom in, you'll actually even you'll see even more sort of details. Um, you'll see over here that there's some really cool sort of images um, that really sort of take what I've asked it to do, and it's really just taken it and run with it, um, and it's been really good and pleasing to see. All right, so I've upscaled a couple of those images there. All right, so this one over here is the upscaled image. And um, as you can see over here, it's pretty decent um, graphics and um, there's some cool elements over here like a funny little egg looking thing with a little bunny type. And um, all the characters look pretty much in, in, in sync um, and there's obviously people walking through and people looking up at the structures and it's almost like a, almost like a little theme park. Alright, so I thought that was a pretty detailed um, view. I then also looked at this picture over here just to assess the sort of the um, the depth and clarity of the image um, and as you can see it's got a bit of a focus effect on you from the camera and you can see the detail of the buildings is absolutely immaculate it looks like a nice wooden structure um, obviously very fictitious but again pretty awesome scene with kids and people and little animals and um, ultimately people going about their work life. So again, pretty fantastic. Um, obviously a little bit of rain there, looks like a bit of a flood. So pretty exciting. All right, what I thought I would do then is add in a weird component. All right, so the, the terminology you would do is type in your regular prompt and grab your image that you want to start from. So grab your base image. So what I did was just basically grab the base image. So you go forward slash imagine grab the base image, pop it in, and what, what you can then do is type in the actual prompt that you would like to create. All right, add in the minus minus weird. All right, so if you add in minus minus weird, put a space, and then it goes zero to a thousand. So zero means not weird at all, but 1000 is sort of your highest weird factor. Um, I left this at 750 and as you can see it's added some weird elements to that base image. Um, yeah, it's all these little guys with smiling faces and it, it does look kind of weird. A um, bit of a dragon in the background. This one over here has got some funky little cookie monster effort there. Um, and as you can see it's created an image that has added an extra element of weirdness. It's like something you wouldn't think of creating. Um, this is not just done it for you sort of off the bat, which is pretty fantastic. 
All right. Um, I then took the other image and I sort of set the weird factor down to 500. Just wanted to see what it would do. And um, again, it's the same scene with the water in the, in the street. Um, and it's added a weird little character in the middle over here. Um, over here, the weirdness comes from probably these little bulbous things. But I thought this was pretty weird. This funky looking sort of totem kind of dude there. Um, and over here is ultimately another image. Yeah, so I quite like this this weird sort of factor because it just brought a new element and a new sort of dynamic to what was being created as the base image. So have a play around with the weird function. So zero to one thousand, and um, put your settings in as you see fit. Remember to obviously keep your your prompt the same, and um, it'll ultimately just add some extra elements. Right, so what I did here was just upscaled this image and uh, we can have a, again have a look at some of the details. Obviously it's got a bit of a lens and um, focus effect, um, which is exactly what we wanted, but you can see the detail here. You can see the eyebrows, you can see the fluffy sort of hair and uh, pretty extremely detailed and intricate here. And again, all these characters are all of all sort of in proportion um, and they're all sort of got going, going about their daily life. So I found that pretty exciting. All right, so what I thought I would do then is see if we could take a different type of element. So something that's based on Pixar and create some characters in an expansive scene showing power and complexity. So again, similar sort of um, uh, command. Um, I took out the weird factor and I took out the chaos factor and this is what it created. So I was really impressed by the le level of detail per vehicle. Um, so what you can see here is um, all your favorite sort of Pixar characters, but there's nothing that's sort of out of place here. There's nothing that looks completely funky. Um, and I thought that was really great. I mean, this guy's got three eyes over here, but that's okay. Um, this image over here, again, all smiling, all happy, and all got different facial expressions. Again, fantastic use of the complexity and the power behind AI. Uh, to generate multiple vehicles, multiple expansive scenes um, that just show depth and detail. Absolutely fantastic. All right, so what I thought was, all right, if it can do that, can it do something with people and faces? And um, as you know, to get uh, stock images of people and stitch them together to show a um, sort of a choir or to show a sort of a hair product or anything like that, this is what it came up with. And again, as you can see, different ethnicities, different attire, um, and again, absolutely exquisite detail. Use the camera to your effect here. If you don't put the camera in, it's not gonna give you a camera shot of a person. It's gonna come up with its own AI image. Um, so again, use the camera, it's super important. Um, again, extremely, extremely detailed here, and um, no funky figures, no disfiguring, anything like that, and I was quite impressed with that. So again, that was basically many hundreds of female faces with different ethnicities in expansive scene. Use the expansive scene, it makes a big difference. All right, so I just upscaled that picture, and um, obviously you can see over here which ones, um, uh, they all look absolutely gorgeous. All right, so that was pretty cool, I thought. Um, what I thought then, could we do vehicles, like normal, actual cars, and um, I wanted to do it in the Fast and Furious style. I quite like that sort of era, um, sort of late 90s, Vin Diesel. And um, what I did was hundreds of fast cars at a party in an expansive scene. Um, and then what I added was a director. So Justin Lin was the director of um, Fast and the Furious. And um, it just added that cinematic sort of um, element to it. I also added cinematic, natural lighting, um, if you want more prompts, have a look at one of my other videos to give you this give you this type of effect. All right, so that was all pretty cool. I thought that was great, um, and I quite like this um, this uh, car over here. And again, you can see the exquisite detail, the lighting, um, and this is what that natural lighting does. All right, so all very cool. I thought. All right. Um, I wanted to see if we could do a concept cars. So one of my other videos has got concept cars. Um, again, pop in your um, camera and I've kept the same director and kept it as cinematic. And as you can see, it's created some pretty awesome things here. Um, and again, the power and the depth 
of creating multiple objects and multiple vehicles that are all proportionate they're all sort of um, uh, in, in, in the same sort of aspect ratio and this is a pretty fantastic scene over here um, I think that actually looks like an LFA but anyways um, so great great opportunities there to play around all right I thought let's try something even more complex so how complex could we get? So hundreds of gorgeous people on a beach, glistening bodies, tans, swimsuits, and a sand castle. All right, and an expansive scene. And um, obviously that's the prompt over there. So what you can see over here is a, a beach setting. And this is a sand castle that people are literally playing on and sitting on. Um, so again, it's taken the sand castle effect and it's made a fantastic uh, image over here. All right, so you can see hundreds of people on the beach, realistic waves, realistic looking sand castle, and ultimately people over here. Um, again, this is also a pretty cool image. So again, I thought, wow, this is pretty fantastic. All right, um, what I wanted to do then was try and take a few more uh, things and see if we could add other elements to it um, to see if we can try to get some concept cars, um, the Tomorrowland sort of vibe, so hundreds of people all in proportion. Um, and again, just showing you the complexity and the power behind this AI image generator. It's, not, it can, it's really good at just a single person or a single image um, or single focus subject. But it's also really good at creating thousands of other subjects. Um, as you can see over here, there's a guy with a camera taking a photo of this car. Um, and again, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. All right, so I just upscaled that one because I quite like the people looking on. All right. I wanted to see what else we could do with it and take some of these insanely complex um, uh, prompts and make them a bit more weird. So this one over here is a complex image and I added the weird factor and a chaos factor. So I've already spoken about weird where you've got the option to go from zero to a thousand and then I've got chaos. All right, so chaos controls how diverse the initial grid's going to be from each other. Uh, so chaos values are from zero to 100. Have a play around with the zero to the 100. Um, I found the 20 up to about 70 gave some really cool effects. Um, and this is ultimately what it produced. So it created some really complex things. And as you can see, these ants or whatever they are, are trying to get out of their little box. All right, so again, the weird and the chaos um, combination. It's got some pretty cool effects. So have a play around with some of those options there. All right. Um, I then added some um, other elements to it. Um, I just took out the chaos and I just left weird in. And what this was, it came up with this weird image over here. And again, pretty weird, right? So it's uh, got a lot of people um, and obviously come to look at the spectacle. So again, pretty, pretty fantastic. All right, um, I wanted to do a drawing of a pirate ship. All right, so this is a drawing and this is the level of detail that it's created. It's created multiple elements, multiple sort of characters, multiple sort of scenes within a scene. And I thought that that was absolutely marvelous. Um, so have a play around with um, the most complex um, uh, keywords and then add in other elements that you'd like. So creatures, peoples, cars, elves, fantasy items, and make them tiny and hidden. Uh, so you, again, you can try and draw yourself into that picture and almost look at it like art, oh, like look for the other hidden pieces behind it. And I thought that was pretty awesome. Uh, that was just another upscaled image. All right, um, what I did over here was, um, uh, took that other image and just upscaled it and this is ultimately showcasing the weird and the chaos factor I also obviously put in the camera because I wanted it to be a realistic person image um, so again this is something that you'd have to probably say uh, create me a man that's green and has got um, foam on his face or sand looking foam you didn't need to do that all you do is you add your weird and your chaos factors um, and that's and that's sort of um, what I played around with so Again, just to recap, so add in the minus minus weird from zero to a thousand, add in the minus minus chaos from zero to 100. Remember your, remember your camera, remember your director, and remember the, uh, the detail that you wanna pop in. If you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, and I'll be back with more.